Hey folks, it's Mike. Um, I'm out uh, outside the uh, the city, uh, somewhere near Lac de Bonny, um, to shoot uh, the stars, maybe the Milky Way, see if it you know rises high enough for me to actually get some uh, decent photos, um, and uh, generally have some fun. Um, <clears throat> I will also say that uh, it's a little colder outside than I was expecting. Um, so I'm not entirely appropriate dre appropriately dressed. I mean, I am wearing gloves, thankfully, but uh, I probably should have worn uh, my winter jacket since it's warmer than, you know, than what I'm wearing right now. Um, oh well. Um, so, yeah. I will say that uh, in terms of shooting uh, the stars, the Milky Way, um, the Northern Lights, um, you, it's, it's ideal that you are in a spot that's, uh, you know, got very little light pollution, so outside the city, um, away from, uh, places that, uh, you know, have, like, powerful lights outside them, like, uh, you know, factories and whatever that, uh, that are, around. Um, I live on the uh, the east side of the city so I have to get away from uh, the CN rail yards uh, um, just on the east side of the city because those are way too bright to shoot in. Um, and uh, so yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the uh, apps that I use to um, essentially uh, find out where I can look in the sky to, to see various stars. The Milky Way uh, is an app called uh, Stellarium. Um, don't remember if there's a, an iPhone version for it, but I, I use an Android, so that's that's the app that I can use. Um, and uh, so, you know, I can you know, show you sort of a little demonstration of what it, uh, what it looks like um, here, or maybe I'll just fill the screen, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little colder than I was expecting it to be. Uh, I've actually... Uh, Luckily, I found a pair of hand warmers uh, that uh, I've got in uh, my camera bag. Uh, you know, very handy to have in situations like this, you know. Um, oh, man. <sighs> really can't wait for summer. Uh, yeah. Taking anywhere from 10 to 20 shots of the uh, of the uh, the sky, you know, basically uh, combine them in uh, uh, Lightroom and uh, Sequitur and Photoshop just to you know get something uh, with a lot less noise in it. Because I'm shooting at uh, ISO 3200, which for my camera is pretty noisy. I mean, you know, cameras like the R5, you know, the Canon R5. You know, you shoot at 3200, it's no big deal. Um, also, uh, other settings, just in case you're curious. Uh, shutter speed's 8 seconds, and I've got the uh, aperture set at uh, f4, which is the, the widest that I can get with the uh, 24 to 105 lens that I'm using. Um, so, yeah, enjoy. So, uh, I think at this point, I'll just send myself back to the studio uh, to explain more because I'm cold Ugh. so I'm just gonna continue shooting so yeah so uh, from what I remember with uh, shooting the Milky Way and editing it last summer um, it wasn't all that difficult there were a few steps but it wasn't uh, anything to really uh, worry too much about um, so yeah, I've actually got uh, steps uh, noted here in a uh, notepad window so I'll just uh, go take a look at it and uh, oh geez Yeesh.
وكل شيء كان معناتها شمعتها Okay, maybe it's a few more steps than I thought. As you can see with the, uh, the photos straight out of the camera, the shots are a little on the dark side, but I've done that because I don't want to increase the ISO too high, uh, otherwise I'll lose detail and the photos will be even grainier. Uh, nor did I want to increase the shutter speed because you'd see star trails, neither of which is ideal. Um, but, uh, I've, uh, got a preset that I've created where I've increased the exposure by about two stops, plus increased the whites and the highlights a bit and dropped the shadows a little bit just to sort of help things along. And, uh, I've also adjusted the, uh, the white balance a little bit just to cool the, uh, the temperature down and to add a little bit of magenta just to make it look a little more natural. Um, cause it, yeah, otherwise it would just look kind of weird. You know my middle name really the uh, the goal with increasing the exposure in Lightroom is to make it easier to bring out the uh, the details in the Milky Way further along in the editing process um, images from my uh, Canon 77d which is a crop sensor are quite noisy beyond ISO 1600 so stacking multiple images reduces the uh, the noise greatly and uh, in the uh, the tone curve panel, uh, I've added a bit of a warped S curve just to uh, help things along later on in the uh, the processing of of the uh, the photo. Once you've made the adjustments with the photo, uh, it's time to copy the settings to the rest of the photos in the series. Make sure that the first photo is selected. Hold down the shift key and then click the last photo in the series to select all of the photos. Uh, at the bottom there uh, in your series. Then uh, click the sync button. Uh, ensure that at least the, the uh, boxes that correspond to the adjustments you made are selected. And then uh, click the uh, synchronize button. The, uh, the program that I'll be using to stack the, uh, the star photos is called Sequitur. It's a free program that you can download for, uh, for PCs and uh, does a great job. Um, there are other programs you can use as well, but Sequitur is the one I use. Um, what you'd use for Mac, I couldn't tell you because I don't, haven't used a Mac in many, many years. But uh, anyway, um, in Lightroom, um, you'll need to export the files in the TIFF format. And uh, the options uh, in the export window that you'll need to choose are no resizing, no sharpening, sRGB for the, uh, the color profile, uh, no compression, and 16-bit. And uh, you can actually save the, uh, the files into uh, the same folder that you saved the rest of the photos um, you know, from your, your starry night. And uh, from there, uh, you, you get to wait for Lightroom to uh, export the photos into a TIFF format and, uh, and wait and, and, and wait some more. Um, so yeah. All right, in uh, Sequitur, uh, just uh, double-click uh, star images to uh, open the folder uh, that contains all of your uh, TIFF files and select them. And then uh, once you've got that done, uh, double-click on uh, noise images uh, so that you can select your, uh, your dark frame, um, which is uh, used to increase the signal-to-noise ratio in photos. And I forgot to do that. <sighs> Baka. Time to give this bad boy a file name. So uh, double click on output, enter in a distinguishing file name. I usually go for something like seq stack or something like that. And then, uh, you know, just so you get an idea of what to look for when you import it again. And then click save. And then uh, from there, uh, click on composition on the uh, left hand side. Uh, choose align stars at the bottom there and then freeze ground. And make sure there's a check mark in the selective checkbox there. Next up, 
uh, click on uh, reduce distortion, um, turn it on of course, and uh, if you're using a wide angle lens, choose complex, uh, otherwise choose tele. Now for the fun part, uh, click sky region, um, and you'll be doing this to uh, paint the sky to create a mask to help with uh, stacking. Uh, don't paint the, uh, the foreground as uh, that ain't moving. At this point, you can uh, just start brushing. You can uh, use the uh, the scroll wheel and the mouse to increase or decrease the brush size. Um, you'll want to uh, get to uh, the smallest brush uh, size just to get those hard to reach places. Sequitur is typically intelligent enough to uh, to essentially not worry about whether or not you you know brush over a tree or whatever. And uh, once you've uh, finished painting the, uh, the sky, uh, at this point, that's it. Just uh, go ahead and uh, click on uh, Start in the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner, and uh, you get to engage in your favorite activity, which is waiting. Hey, who doesn't love waiting? And we're done. Um, at this point, uh, you can uh, now see the uh, the final stacked image here. And as, as you can see, there's uh, very little noise to it, which, hey, kind of cool. And uh, back in Lightroom, uh, right-click on the, uh, the folder that you've been working from and uh, choose Synchronize Folder. Uh, Lightroom should detect and uh, load the, uh, the newly stacked photo from uh, Sequitur. Select only the, uh, the newly stacked photo and uh, click Import. Uh, there's no need to, uh, to import the, the original TIFFs uh, just because you don't really need them at this point. Now you see the uh, the stacked photo, and wait, where are the others? All right, click the folder on the left. That'll uh, bring up the rest of the uh, the photos from your starry night. So yeah, you can you can really see the difference here between the the original uh, photo straight out of the camera, unstacked, versus the uh, the stacked image. Huge difference. Huge difference. And now the real work uh, on my part begins. It's time to edit this sucker in Photoshop. I just need to wait for Photoshop to launch. <sighs> this ought to be a fun wait. Not. Gotta love free sell. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, waiting, and waiting. Ooh, hey, splash screen. And waiting, back to free cell. Woohoo, winning, yay! Still waiting? Yeah, sheesh. I probably should get some more RAM for my computer. Okay, let's play some Doom.
Okay, is Photoshop open now? Uh, no. All right, back to Dune. <laughs> Is it finally open? Pretty please? And success! Yay! So, here's our starting image. Looks pretty good if you ask me, but you know what? Could use some improvement. Just a little bit. All right, so at this point, we're going to be uh, creating three duplicate copies of the background layer and uh, so that we can uh, perform three different edits on, uh, on the image here. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain each, uh, you know, uh, layer uh, as, as we go along. Okay, first stop on our uh, editing tour is to bring out more detail in the Milky Way. And uh, first up, we uh, just add a layer mask, uh, invert it by using Control i and then uh, using a white paintbrush, um, basically just to um, essentially mask in what we want to bring out. So, once you've got that all set up, just start painting over the, uh, the Milky Way core there. Um, I mean, you can, you can be as careful or as, you know, not so careful of, you know, if you want, you just, as long as you cover the area that does contain the Milky Way. Once you've ensured that you've painted your mask, you'll need to blur the mask so that the changes in the next step blend more naturally. From the filter menu, select blur and choose Gaussian blur. Set the value to around 250 and then uh, click OK. All right, at this point, uh, click on the adjustment layer at the bottom and choose Curves. Once you've done that, you'll need to attach it by right clicking on and then choosing Create Clipping Mask so that it only affects that layer immediately below it. Uh, and then at this point, play around with the curve. Uh, you know, uh, increase the, uh, the, the, the brighter areas and darken the darken areas and, uh, you know, play with it, uh, to your heart's content, you know, until you, uh, see what you like. All right, time to add some detail to the Milky Way core. So, uh, click the Sky 2 layer and, uh, turn it on. And, uh, then from the filter menu, go to Sharpen and then Unsharp Mask. And uh, in here, uh, just uh, choose 90% for the uh, amount and for the radius, anywhere between 40 and 50. It uh, doesn't need to be exact. Uh, once you do that, click OK. And, uh, okay, guess what? Time to add a mask. So, yeah, click on the mask there. Invert it with Control-I or Command-I, I think, with the Mac. Uh, and make sure that your brush is white. And uh, you also want to decrease the size of the uh, the brush so that you can get right in there in the details, so you can paint it, you know, really paint it in there. Um, I mean, you don't have to make it too small, but then again, don't make it too big. So yeah, set what you want and start painting. Um, I can also uh, suggest that you um, zoom in uh, to get you know right into where you want to get to to. Uh, paint in all the little sort of detail bits there you want. Um, again, this is sort of a bit of an art form um, and it, it's all down to sort of taste really. I mean, you, you don't necessarily need to be in, you know, a Monet or a Van Gogh or, you know, some, some famous artist, uh, just as long as, you know, you, you basically fill in what you want to fill in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm no artist myself. Uh, I'm just some strange guy on the internet. Uh, so yeah, have at it and go crazy or don't go crazy. Just, you know, do it, do whatever you feel you want to do. So once you've got that, uh, all set up and painted, you know, all, all so pretty and such, uh, the, uh, the next step is basically to add, uh, a little bit of a blur to the, uh, the mask itself. So yeah, click on the mask, 
then go to uh, the filter menu, uh, choose blur, and then Gaussian blur. And uh, you can use the same uh, 250 amount that you used in the, the previous layer. And uh, yeah, go from there. And uh, then at this point, uh, you can set the opacity. It can be 100%, could be 50, could be, again, whatever you prefer. Uh, it's all up to you. Okay, finally to tackle the, uh, the foreground. Uh, at this point, just click on the magic wand tool near the top left-hand corner and uh, click on the, uh, well, the foreground itself because that's what you want, right? Uh, once you do that, uh, click the uh, layer mask uh, button uh, down at the bottom right. And uh, once you do that, it uh, should actually create uh, a layer mask specifically with the, um, the foreground selected, which is precisely what you want. And uh, there are several ways you can go about this. Uh, you can uh, either uh, click on adjustment layer and choose something like brightness, contrast, levels, or curves, or you can go to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter, and uh, it'll bring up the Adobe camera raw window. And from there, you can, uh, you know, uh, play around with uh, things like uh, exposure or shadows or blacks uh, or any of the other sort of common uh, adjustment uh, features you get uh, in, uh, in Lightroom. And uh, again, this is a matter of playing around with, uh, you know, to the point where uh, you can get it to what you want. I mean, you can get it as bright as you want and make it almost daylight, uh, or you can just be a little more subtle about it. It's up to you again. Um, and uh, I'd also um, consider adding a bit of uh, blur as well, just to, uh, just to help things along, just to, you know, not make it look so noisy. And uh, yeah, just play around, uh, maybe adjust that a little bit and click OK and uh, boom, there you go. And from this point, you can uh, then save. So here's the, uh, the original image before uh, Photoshop, and here is the after. So yeah, I mean, you can see a huge difference between the two. Um, and, uh, you, know, in, in, uh, you know, in Lightroom, you can also make uh, some final adjustments, you know, if, if uh, you, know, you wanted to increase uh, the, uh, the noise reduction a little bit more, you can do so. Uh, you can play around with uh, maybe a little more uh, highlights, uh, you know, increase or decrease those to your heart's content, uh, or play with the temperature and tint. Uh, again, it's all about personal preference. Um, you know, um, really at this point, not much else I can say. I mean, there you go. There's, there's sort of the vinyl image. Okay, so it was a few more steps than uh, I remembered from last uh, last time I edited last year. But uh, you know, as you can see, it, uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, the, you, as you can see, the Milky Way has uh, come out uh, quite vibrantly and uh, and uh, looks 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 pretty nice. Um, certainly one to be proud of. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, I guess I'll throw it back out to me out in the the freezing cold. On that, uh, on that note, um, I'm done shooting for the night. Um, so at this point, I'll uh, you know, uh, do the usual, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao, folks.